are Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17 and 18. This is what the Bible says. For behold, for there means because of this. Because, behold, kwa sababu, tazama. Kwa sababu, ina manisha kuna bitu zingine uko nyuma zeni kwa labda si mzuri sana. Lakini mungu ala, anasema, kwa sababu, tazama. <laughs> Amen. For behold, I create, mimi mungu, not your father. Maybe there was no inheritance for you. Maybe your father was not a good man. Maybe your mother was not a good woman. But I, God, I create. I create for you. Oh, look at your neighbor and tell them God is creating for you. God is creating something good for you this year. Amen. So he says, for I create heavens and a new earth. Heavens represents Good things, a paradise, a world of good things, a world of happiness, a world of joy, a world of struggle-free life, a world of no toiling, a, a world, a world, a world, a world of rest. Because he says, come to me, all ye that are, that are, that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. So God, the, the, the world that is creating for us is a world of rest. A world of rest. Rest from struggle. Rest from demonic harassment. Rest from evil. Rest from defeat. Rest from failure. Am I hearing somebody saying hallelujah? Am I hearing somebody saying that is my story this year? So when we say 2023, my year or my season of new beginnings, we are saying this is the year that God will give me rest. This is the year that God will deliver me from struggle. He will deliver me from harassment. He will deliver me from demonic atrocity. He will deliver me from demonic, you know, from failure, from rejection. And all those things that happen on earth because you can be sure there are things that don't happen in heaven. Jesus said, let your kingdom come. May your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that is what God wants for you. That is what God wants for you. Glory to God. I told you in the morning that God wants a future of a new world for you. A future of a new, a brand new world for you. So this is your year of reset. Somebody say reset. God is going to reset your life. If there are things that were not working, then God is going to reset it. God is going to reset your life. And you're going to function like a new computer. Like a new software. Hallelujah. You're going to become like a brand new person. Even in the dark world, they understand that kind of, um, of, of life. They understand. Even a snake, after some years, it will peel off its skin and become brand new. So, so it is possible for you to be born again. It is possible for you to be reset. It is possible for, if it can happen on earth, what about in heaven? You remember that scripture in Revelation chapter 12 verse 12, where it says that you inhabitants of earth rejoice. Rejoice ye inhabitants, the inhabitants of, of heaven. He says that when you live in heaven, there will be joy. I don't want to go ahead of myself, but let me just follow the script here. A new word represents a word that looks like paradise. A world of joy. A world of happiness. If you write these things, it means that you believe. And it means that the Lord has spoken to you. Because whenever God speaks to a 
person, he will tell that person, write down what I speak to you, what I tell you. It's a world of joy, a world of happiness, a world of no struggling, of no struggle, a perfect world for you. God wants us to live a good life here on earth. It may, this earth may not be good for other people. This world may not be good for other people. But for you, it's going to be good. For your family, it's going to be good. For your children, it's going to be good. For your family, it's going to be good. Hallelujah. Amen. A good life. A good life. Somebody say a good life. Lift up your hand and tell your father. Say my father, my maker. As I pray. And as I follow you. Give me a good life. Give me a good life. Give me a good life today. I want to go home with a good life. I want to go home with a package of a good life. That's why I came. May that become your story from today. The ways of God are not our ways. They are higher than ours. So what God will use may escape your, your thinking ability. Your mental capacity. So if there is no need of worrying how it will come to pass. Because you may not even have enough uh, power, enough capacity, enough mental capacity to be able to fathom, to be able to understand what God will do for you. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, the things that I have kept for you, there is no eye that have seen. Ah, let's, let's look at this. 1 Corinthians 2 9. Sorry, First Corinthians 2 9. But as it is written, I had not seen, oh God. You are no I have seen. So there is nobody who can show you or draw for you the kind of life that God has kept for you. Nobody can draw. So nobody can even read. You know, there are people who read a palm, palm readers. They are called fortune tellers. They cannot be able to tell you. If they tell you, they are lying to you. If they tell you something about your future, they are actually lying to you. Because God himself said, there is no I that have seen. So you, you are telling me that my life, you can see darkness ahead of me. Where did you see? Because according to me, and according to the God I believe, the one who created me and my destiny, he says there is no eye. So which eye is that, that have seen? There is no eye. There is no eye. Tell your neighbor there is no eye. There is no eye. That have seen. He says. There is no ear. That have heard. So nobody can tell you. That they had anybody. Say talking about your future. Nobody. Nobody. Only God knows. Where you will end. Only God knows how your ear is going to be. Ah. Hallelujah. So if somebody is not coming from God. They are not qualified. To tell you how your life is going to be. Are you listening to me? He says, and it has not entered the heart of man. And nobody can be able to understand how your life is going to be. Oh, your life is going to be great. According to the ways, according to the will of God. According to the word of God. There will be a new world for you. There will be a reset for you. Every rejection in your life is going to be wiped out. Every failure in your life. Every defeat in your life. God is going to reshape your life. God is going to give you a reset. When a computer keeps on failing, keeps on lagging, keeps on stagnating and delaying, what you do, you reset. And when you reset, it starts now to work properly. It will no longer uh, lag. It will gain speed. After this reset, may your life gain speed. May your business gain speed. May your finances gain speed. Where you are struggling, 
you will not struggle again. Where you are going slowly, you will not go slow again. The spirit of slow motion is being wiped out, is being destroyed by the power of God, by the hand of God. May God reset your life. May God reset your family. May God reset your marriage. May God reset your business. May God reset your career. May God reset your finances. May God reset your, your, your ministry. May God reset your education. May God reset your children. May God reset everything about you. A new world. Tell your neighbor a new world. Amen. Look at Psalms 34. So other people may be in this world and things will not be working for them. But for you, it will be a new world. A world of joy. A world of happiness. That's my assignment to tell you what God is saying. Hallelujah. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. Very important. He says, that Psalms 34, verse 8, very, very important. Your life is going to, to smell sweet and taste sweet. Amen. Your life is going to smell sweet and taste sweet. Uh, sweet. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of God? Let's read it together. I want to go. Oh, test and see that the Lord is good. Amen. I told you in the morning, our God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. This is not the God of Elijah. Not the God of Joshua. Not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we are supposed to see him today. He's supposed to be our God. He's supposed to be our God. Hallelujah. He's now Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. He's the God with us. He's the God of now. The God of today. The God of this age. The God that we can see. The God we can taste. The God that we can smell. The God that we can touch. He is our God. He is your God. I say he is your God. So he says, test him and see that he is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Go to verse 9. He says, oh fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want for them that fear him. Can you imagine that? Mungu anasema, Biblia anasema, tuogope mungu kwa sababu, huku kwa mungu. Tunafaku mwagoka kwa sababu. Huku kwa mungu, watu wenye wanamtumainia huwa hawakosi. Watu ambao wanamuogopa huwa hawakosi. Hallelujah. Epo ogopeni mungu. Kwa sababu kwa hii dunia, kuna mayumbo yumbo mingi sana. Kuna mavitu vitu mbaya sana kwa hii dunia. Lakini wale ambao mtumainia huwa hawakosi. Epo ogopeni huyu mungu. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mimi sijaona Mungu kama huyu. Imagine tunateseka hapa kwa hii dunia, lakini watu ambao wako kwa huyu Mungu huwa hawakosi. Ah, kwa hivyo ogopeni huyu Mungu. Watu watasema hivyo kuhusu Mungu wako. Nasema watu wataogopa Mungu wako. Nasema people will fear your God. They will say let's fear this God. The God of this man. The God of this woman. Because while we are suffering, while we are being harassed, this God has protected this man. This God has protected this woman. While education seems to not be working uh, well children are not going to school uh, his children are going to school uh, her children are going to school uh, when nobody is affording fuel uh, this man is always traveling uh, oh fear this God fear the God of this man fear the God of this woman 
May that be said about you. I say may that be said about you. I say may that be said about us. They will look at Dominion Center. And they will see us growing. Uh, they will see us growing. Uh, even when other people are not growing. Uh, we are going to be growing. Uh, until they will say. Fear the God of Dominion Center. May that become our portion. Glory to Jesus. Desire to see that God. Taste him and see that he is good. He's not a bad God. He's not an evil God. He's not a, you know, he's not a careless God. He's not like our fathers who abandoned us. He's not like our mothers who don't care about us. He care for us. Hallelujah. He thinks about us. Hallelujah. Every time. Every time. So verse, nine, verse 10 says, let's go to verse 10. Verse 10 says, the young lions do lack. Yes, lack is possible even for the young lions. The young the young lions should not lack. The old lions can lack. But not for the young lions. Why? Because the young lions are more powerful, are stronger than the old ones. Isn't it? So they shouldn't be lacking. They should not lack. And even the most, the, the youngest of the young lions, they have their mothers and their fathers running around embryo to make sure that they do not lack. So there is no possibility for a young lion to lack. However, God says, in this world, the young lion may lack. Sometimes they can lack because of the situation around. Even after the mother has hustled, the father has hustled, even with the power, the strength that it has, it can still lack. But he says, <laughs> but he says, they can lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord, come away with Namimi. Are you seeking God? Are you here in search of God? So he says, the young lion with all its, their power, with all their strength, like you see, God said that by strength shall no man prevail. So there are people who have a lot of money. And God says, even with that money, sometimes they may fail. There are people with very powerful and strong backgrounds. Whereby they were born in, uh, from a family that is wealthy. A family that is powerful. A family that is popular. A powerful that is, I mean a family that is famous. But even them, they can still fail. Even them, they can still be defeated in this life. But he says, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Hallelujah. This I prophesy to you. No matter where you come from. No matter who was your mother. No matter who was your father. No matter the level of your education. No matter the level of your faith. I decree today that this year you will not lack. I say this year you will not struggle. I say this year you will not be defeated. I say this year you will not toil in vain in the name of Jesus you will see God this year the Lord will fight for you the Lord will fight for your family the Lord will fight for your business the Lord will fight for your career the Lord will fight for you I say the Lord will fight for you I say you will see God you will test and see that your God is good hallelujah shout amen Lift up your hands and say thank you Jesus. Say thank you Jesus. Please sit down. Glory to God. Look at Isaiah 65 
verse 19. Oh God. Thank you Jesus. Isaiah 65 verse 19 says, And I will rejoice in Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I will rejoice in this life. Say, I will rejoice in this world. When there is a reset, when there is that reconfiguration, there will be rejoicing. Everything will run smoothly. Everything will begin to run smoothly. Are you shouting amen? He says, in this world, you will rejoice. Jerusalem means your home. Jerusalem is your home. This is where you start. Even where you start, even where you are, even where you live, in your Jerusalem, you're going to rejoice. And joy in my people. When people are around you, you will have a reason to celebrate. You know, there are people who come to church and when they see people, they get intimidated. Because the same hair they had last year, June, is still the one they have today. So when they are among the people of God, they are ashamed. You shall not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. This year there will be no shame for you. When you come to church, the same trouser we saw you with last year, February, is the same trouser you have. The same tie is the same. The same coat is the same. The same shoe is the same. That shoe that you used to have is the same. You know, that is changing in the name of Jesus. God says you will have a reason to celebrate and to be joyful around the people. You will not have shame around people anymore. You will not be ashamed. Why? Because there is nothing new in your life. There is nothing new with you. Ulienda mkutano last 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 meeting. Uka ukapeana idea waka kuigno. Uka smama uka jitolea sana kutoa idea. Alafu ulipomaliza. Uh, ata hakuna kitu waliongea kuhusu idea yako. Wakaenda to the next person. May God make you stand out. Wherever you go. May God give you the anointing, the oil to stand out this year at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You will not be ashamed. They will not be ashamed. Your children will not be ashamed when they go to the people, when they go to school, when they go out. They will not be ashamed. There will be no shame for your family. Uh, there are people who cannot introduce their appearance to us. They cannot bring their parents to the church because they are ashamed of how their parents look. Because some of them are ashamed of how they look. So they cannot even bring their, 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 their parents to us. They cannot introduce their parents. Some of you, you intend to get married, but you are wondering your greatest challenge is where are you going to take the people for dowry? Where are you going to take these people to? How will they see you after that? You know, God will give you a reason to celebrate among the people. Amen. He says, and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her. Amen. In your world, he says, in Jerusalem, the voice of mourning will not be heard anymore. In your world, the joy, the, the voice of mourning will not be heard. In your business, the, the voice of mourning shall not be heard. Hallelujah. In your family, the voice of mourning should not be heard this year. That is what God is saying. May that become your portion this year. I say may that become your portion this year. Not the voice of crying. There are people who, when they think about their mothers, they cry. When they think about their children, they cry. When they think about their brothers, they cry. That is changing this year. I say that is changing this year. I say that is changing this year. May our God show himself. May our God show himself in our families. For our brothers. For our sisters. 
we are not happy when we are celebrating here and our brothers and our sisters are languishing in poverty are languishing in shame we do not want that we are going to walk together this year as a family we'll walk together we are not leaving anybody behind we are not leaving you behind we are not leaving anybody behind we are walking together i say we are walking together when you think about your children the suffering they have gone through the diseases the sicknesses the pain of life you cry all the time that voice god is going to shut it god is going to remove it god is going to wipe away your tears from your family in the name of jesus the voice of crying will end i said the voice of crying will end in your family the voice of crying will end in your family you will not cry again because of your brother you will not cry again because of your mother you will not cry again because of your sisters in the name of jesus as you test the goodness of the lord may your family test it too may your family test it too may your family test it too in the name of jesus Lift up your hand and say my father my maker remember my family remember my brothers remember my sisters remember my parents remember my family oh god as you bless me bless them too bless them also bless them also bless them also in the name of jesus may that become your prayer and may that become your answer may that become your prayer and may the lord answer your prayer may the lord answer your prayer may that become your story may it become the story of your family the story of your brothers the story of your sisters in the name of jesus we are not leaving anybody behind hold your your neighbor's hand and tell them we are walking together we are not leaving you behind i'm not leaving you behind we are shining together we will know the goodness of god together we will know the goodness of god together we are not leaving anybody behind furaha yetu sio kwenda ngambo na watu wengine wote wabaki hapa wakiteseka kama tunaenda ngambo tunaenda sisi wote tunatengenezewa njia na Mungu sisi wote Mungu akutengeneze njia Mungu atengeneze familia yako njia Mungu atengeneze watu wenu njia katika jina la Yesu haleluya Kipata kazi state house unahakikisha watu wenyu wameishi vizuri unahakikisha watu wenyu pia wamejisimamia unahakikisha brother zako wamepata kazi hata kama ataanza kama driver hata kama ataanza kama cleaner Uki, ukikuwa manager wa banka wacha kazi yako akuje aoshe ofisi yako wacha kupikie chai wacha watu wenyu wa enjoy the goodness of the lord may that become your story may that be come your story may that become your story in the name of jesus not leaving anyone behind in jesus name sit down so the voice of weeping and crying god is going to to take it away he will stop it this year for us so earth is not a place of punishment for you for me earth i want you to believe this that earth is not a place of punishment for us when god says i will create and i will create new heavens and a new earth he says that i will change your world and your world will not be a place of punishment for you even if it is a place punishment for others for you it shall be different for you it shall be a good place are you shouting amen are you shouting amen what is your responsibility for this world to become a reality for you for this world this kind of world that god is talking about what is and even before we go there I, i'm trying to raise and chase my time 
But let me just, uh, we are here because of the word of God. It is better that I don't give you points, but I give you the word of God, isn't it? Let's just read uh, verse 21 to 25 of Psalm of Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, we read 21 to 25. Amen. I'm happy to see those people that maintains the culture of loving God and coming to church early. It's a great encouragement and a blessing. Let's continue loving God. It pays to love God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. You come in the presence of God and things go bad for you. Things will never go bad for you. Amen. 21 says, and they shall build houses. These people in this new world, in this new Jerusalem here on earth, they shall build houses and inhabit them. There are people who build, but they don't live in it. It shall not be so for you. This year, God will empower you to build your world and live in it. You will not build a world that others will come to live. You will not build a business that other people will come and enjoy the fruit. It is so, you know, this world has wicked people. That you start a kiosk somewhere and you start selling chips. You sell chips, you sell chips. And then when it has, it has uh, blossomed, when the customers have been attracted to that business, the owner tells you, kicks you out. And puts the same business. That is building a business. But another person coming to eat the fruits. That will not be your story. I say that will not be your story. You struggle. You struggle with an idea. You struggle with, a, with an idea. With a business. You struggle. You struggle with a, the with a ministry. And then later on. When it's supposed now to reward you. And pay you. That is when you are taken out of that place, out of that department, and other people the ones now coming to shine, coming to, you know, like, I see the way Kina James struggle here, and you know, and Kina Elder struggling here to make it work, and, and, and the rest of the ministers that are here struggling to make it work, they come early, they, they do everything right, they sacrifice, and then when the ministry is 10,000 seater, you cannot find them anywhere. You, they have been forgotten. That will not be your story. That is not what God wants for you. I, can I prophesy to you? All the workers, all the ministers, you can rise. Can I prophesy to you? Your labor in dominion center shall not be in vain. I say your labor in dominion center shall not be in vain. I prophesy by the time we shall be 10,000 sita, you will be the people that will be in front. You will be the people that will be in the leadership. You will be the people that will be in the administration. You will be the people that will be calling the shots. I declare that in the name of Jesus. Nobody will remove you. Nobody will eat your fruit. Nobody will enjoy your fruit. You cannot struggle the way you have struggled. To see the work of God progress. To see the work of God advance. And then your life is left the way it is. God will not forget you. God will not forget your career. By the time we're becoming 10,000 sita, I prophesy good houses will be for you. The best cars here will be for you. The best businesses will be for you. The greatest honors will be you. The greatest millionaires here will be you. In the name of Jesus. May that be your portion. May that be your story. In Jesus name. I will not be sending other people to Dubai to, to launch Canada branch. To launch Australia branch. And you are the ones that have labored together with me. And then when we are so lifted, you, you are still where you used to be 10 years ago. That will not be your story. Please sit down. That will not be your story. I said that will not be your story. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruits of them. Amen. May that become your story. 
Say, I am ready. Say, my father, my God, I am going to maintain. I am going to be persistent. I am going to wait. I am going to stay here until you reward me. Until you reward me. The Bible says that the husbandman, the planter and the worker, the cultivator, should be the first one to eat the fruit. Amen. Muzzle not the ox while it is cultivating, when it is plowing. When you are working for God, you are supposed to eat from God. You will eat from God. I say you will eat from God. The God that you serve here. Verse 21, 22 says, They shall not build and another inhabit. Say that is not my story. Nobody will live in my house. Nobody will enjoy my labor. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. And mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Say I will enjoy the work of my hands. Say again I will enjoy the work of my hands. Let's go verse 23. Verse 23 says, they shall not labor in vain. Somebody say, I refuse to labor in vain. Say this year, I refuse to labor in vain. Nor bring forth for trouble. Yani wewe hautapata vitu kwa shida. Hautapata gari kwa shida. Ukiendesha gari, utaendesha gari mzuri. Ukiishi kwa nyumba, utaishi nyumba mzuri. Sio nyumba ya kukunyeshea usiku. Katika jina la yesu. Sio nyumba imejama kelele uko inje. Mungu wa kupatia mahali pazuri pa kuishi. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them at our total duguzao na watoto wao watoto wao amen unaona Mungu atuache atubariki peke yetu anatubariki pamoja na watoto wetu for this promise is for you together with your children that is what he says this promise is for you together with your children glory to god Ah, somebody say, I'm not leaving my children. Say, I'm not leaving my children. Verse 24. Verse 24 says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Somebody say, open heaven. Say again, open heaven. Say, lift up your hand and say, My father, my maker, this year, let me enjoy an open heaven. That shall become your portion. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Even before you tell God what you want, God will have surprised you with the answers to your prayer. May that become your portion this year. God knows your family. God knows your trouble. God knows your shame. God knows what you are going through. God knows your fire. God knows your waters. God knows your shame. God knows your troubles. May he answer you even before you call let there be an open heaven for you let there be an open heaven for you this year in the name of Jesus shout hallelujah shout I receive it shout I receive it the last one as we close it says the wolf and the lamb shall fit together somebody say peace say let there be peace in my life in this new world that God is giving you, is going to make sure that there will be peace for you. There will be peace for you. There will be peace in your marriage. There will be peace in your family. There will be peace in your business. There will be peace as you go to work. There will be peace as you return home. There will be peace everywhere for you. A world of peace. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my maker, as I pray, let this year be a peaceful year for me and my family in Jesus' name. So he says, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock and dust shall be the serpent meat. You know, even those that are trying to come after you, wale ambao wanakukujia kama simba, 
wale ambao wanakuendea kama wachawi na, wa, na manyoka Biblia inasema watakula mchanga haleluya Mungu anasema maadui wako ambao wanafanana na simba ambao wakifungua mdomo hivi unasikia kuka, kulala chini kuna watu wakiongea hata uwezi amuka kuna watu wakiongea kwa Facebook hata uwezi kulogin hata uwezi akisha simu kuna watu wakiongea maneno yako kanisani hata uwezi enda kanisa hata uwezi ukaomba wakiguruma wanaguruma kama simba wanakuintimidate wanakufanya utetemeke ukiwakumbuka unatetemeka ukisikia kwa muka unatetemeka ukisikia e, kuku analia huko nje unatetemeka ukisikia honi imepiga unatetemeka ukiona gari ya polisi unatetemeka ukiona watu unatetemeka hao ni masimba Mungu anasema watakula nyasi Mungu anasema watakula nyasi hiyo ni kwa Nisha, mungu atawafanya watanganikiwe watasahau wao sio ngombe waanze kukula nyasi kama ngombe mungu atawa confuse let there be confusion to your enemies let there be confusion to our enemies may god confuse our enemies in the name of jesus all your enemies must be careful this year not to attack you because if they dare they are risking confusion they are risking to be confused they will run mad i said they will run mad i said they will run mad when they think about you they will run mad when they mention your name any tongue that mentions your name in evil and for wickedness let them run mad let them run mad may the lord confuse their head may the lord confuse their head they will think they were talking about you they will talk about their wife they will talk about themselves in the name of Jesus, may that become your portion. Sit down. One day, don't joke with people that are praying. Are you praying? See, today is our 14th day. Are we praying? Don't joke with people that are praying. Prayerful people, don't joke with them. They can confuse your head. One time, Balak uh, bribed Balaam, a prophet. A diviner prophet. You know those people who tell you about your future. And they are not of God. They are not even uh, prophets. They are just diviners. They, they rent a house somewhere in Kayole. For people to go and be told about their future. They are false prophets. They are, to, they are according to God. God sees them the same as Lucifer. The same as demons. There will be no judgment for them. All the false prophets will not even go before God. They will not even have the privilege of other sinners. Other sinners will go before God. So they will enter heaven and kneel before the throne of God. And their judgment will be, uh, will be released. But for, the, but for Satan, Lucifer, and his demons, and the false prophets, they are not given such a privilege of entering heaven. Them, they die straight to hell. Death, straight to hell. They die straight to hell. So, Balak is a king. And he bribes such a prophet. And this prophet goes to, to, to cast the children of God, the people of God. And when he goes to cast them, every time he's opening his mouth to cast them, instead of casting Israel, he would bless Israel and curse Amalek. Hallelujah. Ah, he would curse Moab and, and bless Israel. Can you imagine that? Somebody say confusion. May God confuse all your enemies. All your enemies this year. The enemies of your children. The enemies of your ministry. May the Lord confuse their head. Hallelujah. So don't joke with people who pray. They can confuse your head. 
may their head be confused. Let me give you a story as we end of a man who prays. Don't joke with people who pray. You may not even realize when power is coming, when the anointing is coming, but you continue to stay there. <laughs> you may not be as powerful as Elisha or Elijah to bring down fire, but let me tell you, when you are praying, it's like you are cooking. It's like you are cooking. You are turning slowly, slowly by slowly. You know, you are gra gradually, you are turning. And very soon, you are going to completely uh, see the power of God in your life. Now, this man is from Nigeria. Was from Nigeria. He's late now. Bless of blessed memory. His name was Papa Lola. Papa Lola was very prayerful. One time he went to pray on the mountain. And as he was praying in the wilderness, in the, in the bush, a python, a big python came and rolled itself around his body. And he felt that was a heavy presence of some demonic uh, species. And, and so he only shouted the name of Jesus three times. And that snake, a big serpent, a big uh, python, like an aconda. How many of you have ever watched an aconda? Something like that. Now, he shouted the name of Jesus three times. And the thing fell down and cracked like a hard wood. And it became like dust. Because of the power of prayer. Somebody say prayer. Now, this man one time when he was preaching like this. That's why I love jumping when I'm, I'm praying. Because this man while he was, he was preaching... He started suspending in the air as if he was going to heaven and surely he was being raptured. He was about to be raptured. It is his people that came running. Hey, no, 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 Papa, you cannot go now. Pastor, you cannot go now. And they brought him down. The man was going like Elijah. The man was going like Enoch. He was going like Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't joke with prayer. You never know what is happening. That's why when I'm preaching, I like doing like this so that peradventure, I might also be raptured. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, one day I will be raptured. Amen. <laughs> and don't try to stop me. I will kick you. <laughs> I will not allow you to bring me down. Amen. So this man was that powerful. One day, he finished praying and came back from the mountain. And because they had missed the children, the family, everybody had missed him. So they came, the daughter, one of the daughters came running to him. Like some people here almost uh, knocked me down the day I arrived. Because they came running and they were hugging me and I was not very strong. I felt like I should, I, I can go down. But God held me. Amen. So this daughter came running and hugged him. And you know, she was playing. She was playing there to see his daddy. And this man, Papa Lola said, why are you acting like a mad person? And instantly, the girl became mad. Instantly, the girl became mad. Don't joke with the words of a prayerful person. Hallelujah. He can even just joke. Why are you playing with me like, like a madman? And immediately, instantly, you become mad. So don't joke around people who pray. <laughs> Tell your neighbor you carry fire. <laughs> Tell another neighbor you carry fire. <laughs> Amen. May God anoint you like that. That even when you joke about the devil, he falls in hell. Hallelujah. He gets mad in hell. Hallelujah. Yeah. To keep prophesy up and let your enemies be go mad and be confused. Wana kuwa tu confused everywhere. Everywhere. Unanza kuwana jama fulani. Alikuwa tu sawa. Squeeze sasa. Anatembea kwa barabara. Akifanya kama polisi. <laughs> eh, kesho unaona hana nguo unaona hana shati kesho kuto unapata sasa kona kinyasa enye likuwa mevandani you know like that like that may not become your portion
portion. May the Lord anoint you so much that the enemy will fear you. That the devil will fear you. Stand on your feet huh? in the name of Jesus.